This is the MSI Raider GE67HX. Uh, it is the first gaming laptop that features a 240Hz Quad HD OLED display. And there are several different configurations available, but they all have Intel's latest HX processors, uh, DDR5 memory, and high-powered graphics cards. But no laptop is without issues, and there are plenty of things that you should know before deciding to get this one right here. So without further ado, let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The Raider GE67HX is pretty much a refresh of the GE66, but there are a few differences in the design. It is clearly focused on the gaming look with the customizable RGB bar in the front and the large vents on all sides, but even with its rather thick behind, the laptop itself is still reasonably portable with a weight of just under two and a half kilos. Unfortunately, the 330 watt power brick it comes with is ridiculously large, and when you add that, to the mix, the weight goes up to almost four kilos. So if you really want a laptop to just drag around with you every day, you might want to reconsider your choice. It is very well built, so combining hard plastic with a titanium dark gray metal layer to give it a pretty good feel overall. The hinges are pretty sturdy and there isn't much flex in it. Even the weak spot the GE66 had seems to be holding up much better. It is easy to open it up with one hand and the inside seems to be really well built as well with very little flex in the keyboard when you press it hard but while typing I barely noticed any. As usual MSI is sticking with the Steel Series keyboard that works well and there is no reason to fix things that aren't broken. It has a nice tactile feel to it, the keys are very comfortable and they don't feel wobbly and I would say it is very pleasant to type on it and to game on it. The touchpad though is pretty simple. Uh, a lot of new laptops have these nice and large touchpads, but MSI decided to go for a bit of an old school smaller model instead. That being said, it is pretty smooth, it responds quickly and the wrist rejection works well, so it will be fine to use it on the go. Now the connections are very nicely spread out. On the back there's a power connection, Ethernet port, a Thunderbolt 4 connection and a proper HDMI 2.1 with support for 4 4K 120Hz monitors. On the right side there are two Type-A ports and an SD card reader and on the left side there is a headphone jack, a Type-C connection and another USB Type-A port. And that is a good amount of ports overall. I just do wish they included optional Type-C charging, especially when you look at the size of that power brick, but let's talk performance instead. Now this particular model comes with a new 16 core i9 12900HX and an RTX 3080 Ti and in the default balance mode the results are quite decent. The CPU and GPU thermals are in the mid 80s and that is completely fine and 44 decibels is something you will definitely hear but it's not too loud. In the extreme profile, both the CPU and especially the GPU are getting more power, so games will run faster and the thermals look even better, but 51 decibels is very loud and I don't really think it's viable without using a headset. But if you do put on a headset and you want to game, this is definitely the mode to go for. And then if you enable the cooler booster function, which makes the fans go even louder, it will improve the thermals even more. You just need to make sure that there is absolutely nobody else in the room with you. But if you're sensitive to noise, there is also a silent profile, which is genuinely quiet while gaming, but it does hurt CPU and GPU performance. So if you're playing some lighter games, for example, it will be completely fine. Uh, but for those big AAA titles, you will want to stick to the louder modes. And I have to say that it feels like MSI listened to some of the previous feedback because their earlier laptops easily ran their CPUs constantly in the mid or high 90s and the results this time around just seem much better overall. Since this uses the new 12900HX processor which has more cores than before, multi-core performance is a big step up compared to anything before it. It is a lot faster than the 12900H and nothing else even 
even comes close to it. It also shows how much of a jump Intel has made since their 10th gen models, with the 10 980 HK in the GE76 Raider taking about twice as long to render the same scene. Now, single core performance is up there as well, but since it uses the same cores and similar clock speeds, that hasn't really changed much since the uh, 12900H. Now, when it comes to gaming, as you would expect from that CPU combined with a high-powered RTX 3080 Ti and a MUX switch, uh, this laptop can basically handle anything you throw at it. Even the heaviest AAA titles will hit 60 FPS at the native 1440p resolution, even without DLSS. Now, you can expect most games to run closer from 80 to 120 FPS and lighter games to easily benefit from that 240 Hz refresh rate. Now, technically, uh, you can drop to 1080p resolution and get even higher frame rates, but honestly, games do look a lot better on the native 1440p, and there really isn't any reason to go below that. Now, this is my first 3080 Ti laptop, so I cannot really directly compare it to anything else. But if I compare it to the RTX 3070 Ti in the uh, 2022 ROG Strix SCAR 15, it is a pretty big upgrade in terms of FPS. Still, I do think it's fair to say that for Quad HD gaming, a 3070 Ti laptop will be completely fine as well. But the biggest highlight of this machine is definitely its 240 Hz 1440p OLED display. A Quad HD laptop is a serious upgrade over a Full HD one. It has more pixels, so you get a sharper, better looking image and you get more workspace, which definitely helps productivity. And games just look stunning on this display. The contrast is perfect as you would expect from an OLED panel and the colors are just amazing. Gamut is excellent, covering more than 99% of P3 and more than 96% of Adobe RGB space. Uh, there's some color profiles included in the software and both the P3 and Adobe profile are calibrated perfectly. So you can use this laptop for any kind of color accurate work right out of the box. Now, of course, the display is a lot more glossy and reflective than you would have on your typical gaming laptop, uh, a bit like a touchscreen would be. And it also has that usual OLED flicker when it uh, dips to black on every refresh cycle. And these two things are not something that will bother most people, but it is something to keep in mind because some people are sensitive to it. So if OLED TVs are fine for you, this display will be as well. It is not an extremely bright panel. Uh, most OLED laptops will hit 400 to 600 nits, but this one only goes to 370 nits in SDR mode, which might be on a low end for using outside on a sunny day. And that is a bit of a shame because the panel itself can go brighter. I measured 596 nits in HDR mode, but it will only do that with actual HDR content. Like every other OLED panel, it is very fast with near instant response times. Input latency is very low, so this is a great option for competitive gaming. And it also supports variable refresh rate. So this really is one of the best gaming laptop displays on the market at the moment. It comes with a large 99.9 watt hour battery, but the battery life is pretty mediocre. I managed to get about four hours out of it in a video playback but only two hours in the PC Mark 10 modern office benchmark. And if you're running a AAA game, for example, uh, you will be out of battery in about an hour. So you cannot really go far without your charger. And given the size of your charger, you cannot really go far with it either. Now, if MSI added that Type-C charging option, this could have been a viable laptop to bring to school or to work sometimes, but that is not something I would recommend with a charger of this size and of this weight. Now, the speakers aren't that great either. They go loud enough, but they miss a bit of a bass and just don't sound that clean and that nice. Hi guys, Nana here, and today I'll be talking about MSI's brand new high-end gaming laptop that kind of skips on being sleek and light and thin, but focuses on performance instead, the GE66 Raider. Uh, that being said, gaming laptop speakers are never that good and using a headset instead is just highly recommended. But the 1080p webcam quality is pretty good as long as you have a bit of a light on your face. All right, so this is the test of the camera and of the microphone on the GE67HX and as you can see, it's actually quite decent. 
It's going to be completely fine for an occasional work meeting or for school. The GE67HX is pretty easy to upgrade and to clean. Uh, the bottom panel is fairly easy to take off. And once you're inside, you can easily clean the fans, you can replace the battery, you can replace the SSD or add a second one. Uh, the memory is fully upgradable and you can replace the Wi-Fi chip too, even though Wi-Fi 6E should be fine for the next couple of years. This particular model comes with a two terabyte Samsung SSD that performs really well, so MSI uh, didn't go for whatever is cheapest. Again, if you need more storage, you can just easily add a second M.2 SSD. Uh, now, my thoughts are a bit divided on the MSI software that this laptop comes with. Uh, some parts are done really well, like the performance profiles and all the different color profiles they offer. But what I really don't like is that they have uh, separate apps for different settings instead of a one nice intuitive app. I also don't like that the data collection is on by default and that something that is as important as the OLED care settings is not just off, but the software isn't even installed by default. So if you don't know where to look and that you even need to install it, you might run into OLED burn-in issues much, much sooner than expected. There was a minor issue with the color performance when this laptop just launched that made the display look really um, washed out in a way, but they did fix this. So if you get this machine and it looks like you have this particular issue, uh, you need to reinstall the Intel graphics drivers and that should be able to fix it. Anyways, all of these are, I would say, minor issues on an otherwise impressive laptop, but still it is very good to keep them all in mind. Now, of course, a laptop that comes with an i9-12900HX and a 3080 Ti will not be cheap. And this particular model will cost you about $4,000, which is a lot of money. But a 3070 Ti version, for example, sits closer to $2,300, which sounds way more reasonable. Now, it is still not cheap, but if you consider that the Acer Nitro 5 with an RTX 3070 Ti will cost you about $2,000, uh, spending 300 more for a better CPU and a much, much better display is totally worth it, in my opinion. Uh, in the EU, the 3080 Ti version is also extremely expensive and the 3070 Ti version, again, looks more interesting, costing a couple of hundred euros more than the other 3070 Ti mainstream laptops, which usually cost around 2K. Now, of course, it is always about trying to balance uh, what really fits you and your wallet best. So if you're looking for a very portable machine with a great battery life, this is not a laptop for you. And if you want to save up a bit, um, you can always find some cheaper deals of the mainstream machines that offer a lot of CPU and a lot of GPU power for as little money as possible. But then you also kind of miss out on a bit of a premium experience, which in this case is this fantastic OLED display. So you need to make sure to figure out what you need from a gaming laptop before deciding which laptop you should get. That's it. Thank you all for watching this video and for sticking to the end. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this particular machine and if this is something you would get for yourself. And while you're there, don't forget to like this video and to click that subscribe button to never miss my future uploads. Bye all and see you in the next one. Bye.